All right, thank you everyone for joining me today for DBA Tools. We're going to talk about migrating to SQL 2022. 2022. This is me. My name's Jess Pomfret. My pronouns are she and her. I'm a data platform architect for data masterminds, and I'm an open source contributor. I love contributing to DBA Tools, which we'll learn more about, DBA Checks, and I've written a couple of uh, resources for the SQL Server DSC module. I'm also passionate about SQL Server, PowerShell, and proper football. I've got a really weird accent. I, I am English, but I lived in America for 15 years, and there was some confusion about what proper football was. <laughs> but anyway, the most important information on this slide is my contact details, my email address if you've got questions. Uh, it's going to be tight for time in a 20-minute session, so if you've got questions, I do want to hear them. Reach out to me on email or find me around, it, around the conference if we don't get time for them in the session. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm kind of on Twitter, but I'm not really following uh, much on there at the moment. And I'm on Mastodon, and I don't really know how I feel about it. But find me on the internet somewhere. I'd love to connect and chat. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about what DBA Tools is. How many people already know what DBA Tools is? Yeah, cool, most people. And then we're going to talk about migrating to SQL Server 2022. Now, there's really two parts when we're migrating, right? There's the planning, which is the hard part. And then there's the actual migrating, which is the easy part. So we're going to cover the easy part today. 2022 has just come out this year, right? Or last year, I guess. Technically, we're 2023 now. And there's plenty of sessions on, this, on at this conference telling you all about all the great things for 2022 and why we want to upgrade to them. But 2022 supports upgrades in place from 2012 or higher, as long as your source database compatibility is at least 90. If it's less than that, it will be, uh, actually, it will be bumped to 100 if it's 90. And if it's less than that, it will need to be 100 by the time you get to 2022. 2022 also supports backups from as old as 2008. So if you've got 2008 instances, I'm sure we don't, right? Everything's new and shiny. You can take a backup from that instance and put it straight to 2022. You can also use log shipping. It's supported as long as your primary or where you're coming from is running 2008 SP3 or later. Why do we want to get to my, why do we want to get to SQL 2022? New stuff, right? Shiny new improvements. We've got all kinds of things like links to Azure SQL managed instances, security improvements with purview integration. We've got query store and intelligent query processing stuff, including query store on secondary replicas, which is super cool. There's T SQL additions. There's all kinds of great stuff. We've only got 20 minutes, so we can't go through all this stuff, but there is plenty of reasons to upgrade to 2022. It's also worth mentioning that we'll stay on supported technology, right? We don't need to be on the very latest cutting edge, but upgrading and staying on like 2019, 2022 is going to be much easier to maintain and stay close to supported technology, right? We don't want to end up running SQL 2000 <clears throat> in 2023. So how do we do a migration? We've got three real options that we're going to talk about. We've got an in-place upgrade. Not my personal favorite. It's the easiest, right? It's just you're just going to upgrade the SQL Server where it is. You don't have to move anything. But there is downtime during that upgrade, during that installation, basically. Also, the rollback is not as easy. You're going to have to uninstall stuff, restore databases, all on that one VM. But you don't need more hardware, right? Or more virtual hardware. The next option is a side-by-side -side upgrade, or what we're going to call a migration where we're going to build a new VM, and we're going to install the latest OS. We're going to install SQL Server 2022, and then we're going to migrate our databases over to it. This is my preferred method of upgrading uh, databases. Finally, a, a mention of a rolling upgrade. If you're in a cluster or a high, high availability, uh, using availability groups or something like that, you can do a rolling upgrade, where you upgrade one replica, and then migrate your, or fail your databases over, and then upgrade the other. It's still kind of an in-place upgrade. You don't get that opportunity to uh, install the new OS, uh, but it is an option. We're going to look at migrations with DBA tools and that side-by-side -side upgrade method. So today, during, uh, during this session, we're going to talk about migrating databases and logins. But it's good to know that there is tons of stuff you can migrate with DBA tools. We'll take a look at how we can find all of the copy commands, which is what's going to allow you to move stuff from one instance to another. 
All of my demos are available on GitHub, and I've built them as a dev container. If you don't know what a dev container is, it's a really neat concept. Uh, and basically, everything you need is within that repo. Databases, SQL Server instances, all of the code for the demos is available at that link, and you can pull it down and build my entire demo environment on your laptop. So let's take a look at that. Can we see some code? Cool. All right, so we're going to talk about two options for migrations. We're going to go simple first, and then we're going to talk about some more advanced methods. As I mentioned, DBA tools, there are a ton of copy commands. And in PowerShell, you can use get dash command, pass in a module of DBA tools, and the verb of copy to get a whole list of copy commands. Here you can see we've got stuff for agent, we've got stuff for database mail. All this stuff can be copied from one instance to another with DBA tools. Let's take a look at our environment. So we've got, let's do this. We've got some databases, okay? I've got two instances running in my dev container, DBA tools one and DBA tools two. And I'm using get dash database and I'm passing in this hash table. If you haven't seen this before, I'm using splatting, which is basically building a hash table Parameter names on the left, parameter values on the right. And then that gets passed through to get DBA database. One cool thing is, is the out variable. That's a common parameter on all PowerShell commands. If you throw out variable on, the command or the output you see on the screen is also saved to that variable, which means we can use it later on, which is really neat. So we got three databases on my DBA tools one instance. Good to know. Let's also take a look at our logins. We can use get DBA login for that. And you can see I've got a whole variety of logins. I've got SQL logins, I've got Windows groups, I've got Windows users. This is gonna bring back all of the logins, AD or SQL, on my instance. Let's go ahead and take a look at the processes. Get DBA process is gonna show if there's anything actively running about my, against my instance. I've got nothing running right now, but you, could, you would see processes here. If we did have processes running, we could stop them or kill them by piping. So get DBA process is going to get all of the processes. It's going to pass it through the pipeline, which basically takes the output from the command on the left, passes it through to the command on the right, and it will stop them. Not really in a gentle fashion. This is basically just doing kill, spid, whatever, right? Cool. So let's first of all migrate our logins. We're going to use copy DBA login for that. And we can just pass in the source and the destination. That's all we need. You can see that it has successfully migrated some. It's skipped others. And it's given you an explanation of why. There's a couple that are local uh, machine names. Those don't need to be migrated. And the SQL admin login already exists on the destination. If I want to overwrite it, I can use the force our parameter and say, if it exists, overwrite it. Couple of cool things to mention on this command. This is not just copying uh, the names of the users, right? This is taking the SIDs and the passwords for any SQL logins. So the SIDs will match on the destination. You won't end up with uh, orphaned users. Also the password, right? How many times have you not been able to mig migrate a database because you don't know some application password that's baked in somewhere? With DBA tools, we can copy that across. We still can't tell you what the password is, but we're taking that hashed value, and it's going to be the same on the destination, so you'll still be able to log in. All right, let's migrate the databases. We'll get this started, and then we'll talk through it. Again, we've got a source and a destination. Database, I'm using that uh, variable that we saved from get DBA database, and I'm just passing the names through. I'm saying I want to use the backup restore method. What that's going to do is it's going to back up and it's going to restore. It's in the name, right? And we're going to use that shared path of uh, slash shared. The key there is that both accounts, uh, both engine accounts, service accounts, have access to that share because they need to be able to back up and restore. Then finally, we're going to set the source offline. Once we upgrade, once we get to 2022, we're going to want to check our compatibility levels. You can see my databases on DBA Tools 2. I've got some that are in a lower version, right? Because I just brought them from somewhere else. They're at version 130. The system databases are all at 160. 
I'm going to add a couple of parameters or a couple of uh, properties to my hash table. Database Northwind and version 160 for the compatibility. And then I can run set DBA compatibility with that same hash table with those added properties. And you can see I've upgraded uh, Northwind to the latest compatibility. One note on this, compatibility 160 is only available in the latest version of SMO, and you need the latest DBA tools version. 2.0 is coming out soon, so if you want to use this now, you need to use allow pre-release when you install that module to get the preview version. Also, when we upgrade databases, there's a lot of other things that we might want to do, right? One of the things I love about DBA tools is all of this community knowledge can be baked into commands. This blog post is old now, but it, it is a dozen things to check when you upgrade. And those things have all been baked into that command. I would recommend reading the blog post before you just run it on your uh, migrated databases. But this is going to do a whole bunch of useful things. Refreshing views, updating stats, updating compatibility levels if they don't match. That is like a simple migration. Obviously, we've got to have enough downtime to do the backup and the restore, right? Which is not going to be possible with bigger databases. But if you've got small application databases, this is how simple it can be to migrate your databases to 2022. And just to prove it in Azure Data Studio, if we refresh this, and we refresh this, you can see that my databases on DBA Tools 1 are now offline, and they're online and ready on DBA Tools 2, which is our 2022 instance. Cool. All right, so as I mentioned, that's not always possible, right? We don't always have that much time. What happens if my database is massive or super critical, and I need to minimize that downtime? I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the processes that are running currently. I've got none. Cool. I'm going to remove the databases on the destination using get DBA database from DBA Tools 2 and piping it through to remove DBA database. And I'm going to bring my source databases back online with set DBA DB state. This is just resetting my environment so we can do it all again, right? But this time, I've got a handy rem reminder here. I've got to go open an application. So I've got a little application that I wrote. Just ignore those warnings. I'm going to run invoke pubs application. What this is going to do is it's just going to create orders into my pubs database so that we've got some activity to play with. This is now a mission critical database. My pubs orders must be maintained. So I've got, I've got data going into my database. That's going to run forever. I'm just going to change back to my other tab. And what we're going to do is we're going to pre-stage uh, our database. So copy DBA database. It's going to look a lot the same as the previous one, my source destination. Just specifying the pubs database. Again, backup restore. Uh, and this time I'm saying no recovery, so leave the backup, uh, leave the database ready to receive some more uh, restores, and no copy only. That's going to break my LSN chain, right? And it's going to restart the LSN chain from that full backup that I just took. Important to like, note that and remember that if you then need a restore on your primary or your source while you're working on this, your LSN chain is from here now, right? Let's go ahead and check my copy results. This is the time that I copied the database across, right? That's going to be important in a minute. So we'll remember that, 11.43. Now we get to the downtime window, right? This pre-staging of most of the, full, of the full backup, this can happen any time before our migration, before our cutover point. Now we get to the point where we're ready for the downtime. The business has taken this, uh, this outage. And we're going to go ahead and stop that application. Cool. And we'll come back here. Let's check our processes with get DBA process. You can see even though I've killed that off, there are still a few connections hanging out, probably sleeping. As long as I'm sure from my application team, I wouldn't recommend just killing these off. Maybe just double check that they're ready to go. But we can kill off any leftover processes. Again. Get DBA process, pipe in through to stop DBA process. We just killed all of those sessions. Thanks, Mikey. Let's check what our newest order is. 11.44, right? Remember when we took our last backup? 11.43. So we've had new orders going into our source before we did that cutover. Let's take a differential backup with backup DBA database. I'm specifying the type of differential. 
let's go ahead and set the source database offline so that no one else can get in there, right? I don't want people accidentally repointing to my source. Let's see what state we're in right now. Cool. So we got pubs offline on, on DBA Tools 1 and restoring on DBA Tools 2. We'll bring that DBA Tools 2 uh, database online by restoring the differential. Cool, that's completed successfully. So now that, that is just the changes, right, from the full backup. So maybe it's been a few days and we need to do this one more time before we do the, the actual downtime and cutover. But we can make this the smallest backup possible, right? We could use differentials, we could use log backups. The point is we're only restoring a small amount of data. Let's see how we are now. Cool, pubs offline on DBA Tools 1, but normal on DBA Tools 2, ready for, ac ready for access. Let's recheck our data on DBA Tools 2. You can see that it's at, from 11.44. And I'll just show you at the end of this command, I used the out variable again. So destination sales was the query I ran this time. The previous one I put into source sales, which means we can check those two variables at the end and confirm that we got the same number of orders and the last order is from the same date. You could check this uh, many ways, right, to make sure your data is up to date, but this just kind of proves that we staged our, most of our data ahead of time, orders were still going in, and then we took the change uh, and we're up to date on DBA tools too. Okay, that was uh, a whistle stop tour, wasn't it? Let's pop back into here for just a second. As I mentioned, that was fast, but my point is, DBA tools can handle really simple migrations where you just want to back up and restore, or it can handle more complicated migrations where you need to pre-stage data. You can also use log shipping, and there's commands built into DBA tools where you can set up log shipping and then cut over to it with that invoke. Yeah, Sander wrote most of them. He sat in the front row, so bother him if you need enhancements. But we've used that in work, at work with our clients to set up log shipping and then fail over when it is cut over time. You just have to get that last log back up there. And you can have pretty big databases migrated in like minutes, right? Clients are always super impressed with that. We do have a couple of minutes for, uh, for questions if you have them. If not, like I said, find me wandering around for the next couple of days. Uh, email me, connect on LinkedIn. Finally, please do leave feedback. Uh, I love coming to these events and speaking to you all, and the feedback is really important because if you hated this session, tell me how to make it better. If you love this session, just make me feel good about it. Thank you very much for coming. If you've got any questions, we've probably got a couple minutes. Two minutes, Mikey, would you say? All right, question over there. What other method do I have other than backup restore? So uh, you can either lose log shipping if it's more complicated to set up something like that. But actually on the copy DBA database, you have backup restore or you can do attach detach, which will attach the MDFs and LDFs, copy them across and then reattach them. Does it copy or cut? Do you know the answer? Copy. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, one other thing to mention is DBA Tools has really great comment-based help for every command. So if you run get-help for copy DBA database, all of the parameters are laid out. There's examples for every command. Uh, all kinds of good stuff in there. Good question, thank you. One last question? Oh, yeah. What, come see me afterwards, because I've got a code for a DBA Tools month of lunches book that you can win for a good question. One more question? <laughs> <laughs> Over here, first hand. Can DBA tools just do native backup restore or can you use, utilize third party? Great question. So the question was can DBA tools just do native SQL backups and restores or can it utilize third party? Built into DBA tools, it's just native SQL backups. Um, I wrote a process previously at a different company. We use Commvault and they had an API. So you could in integrate some of that stuff with DBA tools commands, but not directly with the copy, no. Good question. Come see me after. <laughs> cool. All right. I will f uh, close up this session. Please feedback. Uh, contact me. Bother me in the uh, conference for the rest of the time. Really appreciate you all coming here. Thank you.